Is Jesus first in your life? Yes, ma'am. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. In case you've forgotten this, let me just remind you that you don't have to seek things and neither do I. We seek God and he adds the things. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Beautiful single lady who wants to get married so bad you can hardly stand it. <laughs> I, you'd be happy just to have a date, as a matter of fact. Just like <laughs> Tell God what you want, then get off of it. Don't camp on top of it the rest of your life. Seek God and let him do the right thing in your life. Amen. And I just, just, just throwing this out there for your comfort. You know, if you're single right now, you can pretty much do what you want to. When you get married, not so much. <laughs> now, hey, I love being married. I've been married 50 years and I've got a good one, a really good one. But here's the thing. You want to make sure you wait long enough to get a good one because if you get a bad one, mm, you're going to wish you were single again. Colossians 1, 17 and 18. I want you to look at this. This is so good. And he himself existed before all things. And in him all things consist, cohere, and are held together. I love to just look at that verse over and over. He's holding everything together right now. <laughs> Jesus isn't here. Everything falls apart. He is the head of his body, the church, seeing that he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead. Now, just get this last sentence. So that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place, stand first and be preeminent. That's such a good scripture. Okay, so let's just talk about some of the things that could be first in our life that probably shouldn't be. Well, how about making money? No, we all like money. We all need money. But when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to ask for your bank balance. <laughs> There's not one person in here that's going to say, bring my account and I want to know how much money I got in the bank. You're going to want some family. You're going to want some people that love you. You're going to want to have peace to know that you're going to meet with Jesus at any moment. Matthew 6, 19 says, do not gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and worm consume and destroy and where thieves break through and steal. But here's a scripture that I absolutely love. Do you know in Revelation, I think it's 3, 17, it says, because in one single hour, all the vast wealth has been destroyed, wiped out. And all ship captains and pilots, navigators, and all who live by seafaring, the crews, and all who put their trade on the sea stood a long way off. You know what the Bible says? In one hour in the last days, Babylon's going to completely fall. The whole world system and everything that we put all of our confidence in, stock market's going to fall, everything's going to fall. So we have to realize that Everything that we have, all of our money, all of our possessions, everything we have, and I'm not saying this to be scary. I'm just saying it so we get our priorities in line. I'm saying it to myself as well as you. I mean, it could be gone in one hour. So we want to make sure that Jesus is first. And sometimes when we get too caught up in trying to make money, how many people are working today? I'm not saying it's you, but... How many people are working 
two and three jobs so they can pay for a bunch of stuff that they don't even need. A bigger house, a more expensive car, or this or that, a boat, a yacht, or whatever. And it's okay to have those things if you can have them without stress in your life. But if they're going to stress you out and you're going to be stressed out over the debt of having to pay for those things all the time, and you're going to have to work so much you can never spend any time with your family, then maybe God brought you here tonight so you could re-examine some of your priorities. Because <laughs> you know what happens when we don't look at our priorities, to be honest? We can get in places and not even know how we got there. It's like, what happened to my life? Have you ever thought that? How did I get in this mess? How did, I, how did I let myself get into this situation? All those things have pull on us. 